I followed uh, Red Hat for many years, and obviously, I, I, when I think Red Hat, I think open source. I think open as a philosophy. Now, I know that you are a key committer, very involved with um, Apache Camel, and I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that, about uh, your role and about Camel itself, how it fits with Red Hat and the stack. If you take a look at the inter Agile integration stack, yes. with the three pillars, you have distributed integrations, you have containers and APIs. Then Camel's main area is within the first pillar, distributed integration. Okay, so what makes Camel special? Obviously, it's um, it's been around for, what, 10 years? So yes. that's a success story in software. Absolutely, so what makes Camel special is that, you know, with the premise of distributed integration, that yes. Uh, developers uh, need to build integration where it's needed rather than trying to centralize it which using sort of like an hub and spoke as less ESB architecture. Right. So that is possible with Camel because Camel is a very lightweight integration framework that has a very low footprint that allows you to run and use Camel anywhere. Okay, so it, it's not resource intensive, you can put it in different places? Absolutely. So. People can use it on on premise or on the cloud using containers, and it's very lightweight. So yes, uh, Apache Camel is probably the most popular integration library or framework in on the market today. Okay. It's very successful, um, but not uh, say it's not dominating one industry over the others. So it's very generic. So you can use it in healthcare, in finance, in automotive. Uh, space, uh, anything, you know, retailers, okay. for example, and many retailers are using it. So, How do you see uh, open source communities like Apache Camel contributing to innovation? Oh, I see that is a key factor for open source communities that uh, they're driving innovation in a much faster way than we've seen ever before. Um, so when Camel was created over 10 years ago, um, you know, open source uh, was not sort of like uh, ubiquitous as it is today. Right. It wasn't sort of like a first choice back then, so there was more pushback around that one, and we were sort of like competing against the big vendors with their proprietary uh, integration products. But because we were a community-driven and an open society, we were able to sort of attract uh, people from the community to help innovate and, and, int and uh, contribute their time Okay. And, and cost and creation to the project. And that's the key factor of open source communities is that you know, people can actually, with, if they have the interest of heart, they can be engaged in those communities and be, be part of it. Mm -hmm. And especially around the Apache Software Foundation, it's very important in the fact that it's a vendor neutral foundation. So people have more trust in to, to Apache. It's not like a single vendor that has control of everything. Right. So people are more willing to go to a community like Apache or Eclipse or some other ones and help the and help those communities. If you show the skills and, and you know you, you do the effort to become a committer, anyone can become a committer. It's not like uh, you know the there's a gated community per right. se. And that's is I say a key fact of innovation as well because we get new minds into the game. Uh, and that's why you know can say Camel year over year has been growing and being able to compete against, let's say, huge budgets from big windows because of the open source, sure. and open way now. What is so great about Camel is that, you know, as being an integration library, there are, you know, comes out of the box with 200 or so connectors for many different IT systems, mm -hmm. legacy systems and new systems and, and cloud providers and so on. So you have the broad spectrum for everything. And the reason for that is because it's very easy or fairly easy to build your own com uh, connectors. Okay. So that is what we see. So if chances are that you are integrating with some system and there's not an out-of-the-box connector that works for that, you could build your own. You build it and then contribute it. Yes, that's what we're doing. And people are very, as I said, uh, people are very willing to do that when it's the uh, Passive Software Foundation that is contributing right. to it because it's a trusted entity and so on. So obviously you're passionate about Camel. You've been working on it for a long time. What are your customers doing? Um, can you give me any examples of how Red Hat uh, customers are using Camel for integration? Yes, so we do have customers uh, using Camel in sort of in both worlds, so to speak, and I'm talking about uh, Greenfield products and sure. versus Brownfield. 
So you can say in more traditional enterprise uh, integration products using a brownfield approach, we see that you know there's a need for that because um, any enterprises of today have a, a large set of different IT systems. Sure. And some of those will classify You have a legacy, right? Legacy, yes. And that is actually where Camel, you know, excels because we have, you know, a long project and we have many different legacy connectors. So that is where we see uh, huge uses for Camel. Um, but on the flip side, we also see, you know, customers that want to, you know, build modern integration style applications based on microservice and, you know, cloud native and containers and all that mm -hmm. what you have. So that is also possible. And the reason is, you know, Camel is this lightweight integration framework that you can run anywhere. So okay. we see a huge benefit of that because you, you, your staff, our customers, our staff, engineers, and so on, they are able to work on all kind of products. And also... So the skills are transferable? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's, but, you know, it's not typically either or, so not, we don't have a, sing, uh, let's say, a company that only do greenfield and another one only do right. brownfield. So it's usually a combination of both, and that's where you can sort of sometimes also make these transitional integration styles where you, you know, do some brownfield that sort of, you know, connect to a legacy system and then have some greenfields for the new modern thing and they can still integrate together. Okay, so if you're building a, a greenfield solution and you still need to get data from your existing system, yes. Apache Camel is a good way to yes, connect. Yes, yeah. So if people are looking for tools for um, integration, uh, where can they get more information about Camel, how to get started? Well, I have to point people in the direction of the official Camel website you can mm -hmm. find on Apache. Um, it has, you know, information how to get started and we'll find out more information. And sure. we do also have a collection of, um, let's say, third party blogs and articles and videos and so okay. on. So that's a huge But price. if I want one source, where am I going to get it? Uh, great question, Adrian. <laughs> So it just happened to be that I have been a little busy writing a book. So this is my new book, Camel in Action, second edition. Excellent. And you know, I, use, I will say, now. so Camel is easy. If you want to learn Camel, just go and buy this book and read the 800 or so pages and you're off to go. Yeah. Let's hold it up this way, because this way is scary. This way looks uh, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, thank you. This is good.